Yeah, thank you. Um, first of all, it's a great pleasure to be here, um, Madam Chairperson, it's a, with all those distinguished guests here. Um, let, let me introduce and, and you know, the, the idea of an infrastructure country balance sheet, which I think is something which, which is really needed. So, you know, where, where's the strange idea of an infrastructure balance sheet for a country coming from? Um, so, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll briefly explain where that idea is, 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 is coming from, what it is, and, and you know, how it can help in this, in this specific context. Um, the, the idea really comes from two problems we see right now. The first one is when we, when we look around, there is uh, an incredible deficit when it comes to high quality financial information about the infrastructure stock and the infrastructure investments in a country. We typically have pretty good operational information about the road kilometers, the, even the quality of the roads and stuff. But when we try to consolidate that and try to understand how does actually the infrastructure space look like from through the eye of the president, through the eye of the Minister of Finance, through the eye of the Minister of Infrastructure, it's actually very difficult to, to find that financial information. So that was, that was the first you know, trigger for that idea. The second one is the lack of, or the, the, the conflict between the nature of infrastructure and the annual cash accounting budgeting cycle of governments. So we basically you know, live in an, in an annual budgeting cycle and with that we are trying to deal with projects that take five, 10 years to realize and have a lifespan of 30, 40, 50 years. And there's, there's also a bit uh, of, of that conflict there, right? So that, that led to this idea of actually, we need to create infrastructure balance sheets for countries. Um, so how does this balance sheet look like? It's actually pretty simple, right? You know, you have on the one hand side, you have the value of your assets, like you have on, on, on any balance sheet. You have the value of your roads, you have the value of your ports, your airports, your, your water, your sanitation, etc. And on the other side, you look at what's actually the funding of it. You know, how did we, and, and Madam Chairperson, you, you, you talked about 60% of the money now coming from Treasury, you know, which portion is funded by donors, which portion is funded by uh, the, the private sector. Now, that balance sheet forces you to have a bit of a longer term perspective because suddenly you're, you're really discussing the quality of the balance sheet for a country. And I still have the dream that at some point in time, the quality of a balance sheet will become even a topic in an election campaign, but that may be a little bit far, <laughs> far off. Um, but on a more serious note, um, with, with that balance sheet, you, you're now trying to ask a couple of questions which are also very relevant for unsolicited bits. Um, how does actually the new infrastructure asset that is going to be created fit into that balance sheet, right? Is it, is it at, at the right spot? Is it really where, where, where we have the need? You ask questions about what is actually the funding of it. Um, and um, you know, there, there's the, you know, every banker uh, is, is very familiar with the, with the question, is it off or on balance sheet? Uh, often what we hear are basically structures that look like countries get it off their balance sheet, but in fact actually because the countries still bear the risks, the rigid risks, when, when you tr truly take a hard look at it, it's actually on the balance sheet. Yeah. Uh, because countries are the, the last resort and they are still you know, financially responsible for, for the success of the asset. Right? It forces you to ask questions, can we actually truly move that asset out and give it into the hands of private investors? Because you know, maybe this is not a strategic asset and we have the right regulatory environment so that can be truly getting out of the asset. And I think that, that also can be an interesting distinction between where you want to have competition and where you're actually quite happy with a, with a different framework for an unsolicited bit, right? So the, the, this, is, this is the thinking uh, behind it. Um, again, you know, just to, to, to force us to think about you know, the quality of our infrastructure in a bit more of a longer term perspective. I mean, one, one thing I would love to have on the balance sheet of every country is you know, the provisions for backlog and maintenance. Yeah? Uh, because these are future liabilities and, and someday we'll pay for it. Right, we'll pay for it either through you know, increased maintenance costs or we'll pay for it through a replacement of infrastructure. So do we actually understand the moment we put a new asset on our balance sheet, what are the future liabilities and how are we gonna finance and account for that? Right. So that, that's, that's, the, uh, that, that's the framework of, of the country balance sheet that I would like to, you know, the, the thought leave with you. Doing business in Africa, you can't afford to be without Africa Investor.